She thought you were just starting. Praise God. Today is a glorious day. Hallelujah. Wonderful day. Fantastic, fabulous day. Hallelujah. A day that is unique. This day is the reason we are a living set of people. If he did not rise, our faith is zero. Nothing. But he arose. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can we rise on our feet and give holy shout? He arose. He arose. Woo. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Praise the Lord. Now, in the ball game of the devil, it's like I've finished him. I've finished him. I've killed him. And he withdrew all the demons because there's nothing to fight again. And they were all to come and see his conquest. But glory be to God. The third day, Jesus arose. Hold on, hold on. So you are going to be shouting, but before you shout, you say, oh, I'll be Satan, he don't arise. Then you shout, glory. I'm sure you know which is, oh, we, you know, when you have, uh, how do we call them now? Abbe, Egboje. Abi, Sabotio. Somebody was never satisfied with what he had. Wanted to be greater. So we are going to hobby him and give a holy shout. He arose. Are we ready? You do the hobby very well. Let Satan be annoyed though. One, two, go. Glory. He arose. The tomb is empty. The cross is empty. He arose. Glory to the highest. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray there will be revelation. The eyes of the understanding of your people will be enlightened. Spirit divine, reveal the blessings of resurrection to everyone in the house. Let no one lose the stint of it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy by the revelation and light you will have today. You will overcome every circumstance in your life. By this word, everyone in the grave, you are coming out. Everyone that is bound, you are going to be loosed. By the word of God, you will be transformed. You will be lifted. You will be promoted. You are working out of this circumstance. You are working out on the devil. And the glory of God will be revealed to you. Holy Spirit, have your right of way. And let Jesus be exalted. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say, Can we be seated for serious business? Um, I'm not going to go into the rhetorics of his death, burial, and resurrection. That's a foregone conclusion. He arose. Hallelujah. The devil tried everything to bring him down, but he arose. And because he arose, there are blessings that accrue to the saints. It is these blessings that are very important. Not what you eat on a day like this, not the dress that you wear. It is the revelation you are able to catch. If the believers will understand, embrace, Digest, meditate on what resurrection portends. I tell you, we will walk free, we we'll live in liberty, our lives will never be the same again. So this morning I'm going to be attempting, and thank God, it's in consonance, it's in line with 
the Holy Spirit studies. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at it quickly. Because without the Holy Spirit, there will have been no resurrection. So therefore, hear me. As you understand and begin to search to know the Holy Spirit, to navigate towards him, to enter into fellowship with him, you are breathing the pathway for greatness in your life. Listen, by, power, by the power of resurrection, anything dead in your body, in your life, can rise. Anything dead in your destiny can rise. Dead opportunities can come again. Whatever is wrong in the whole of your life can be restored by virtue of the resurrection. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible tells us from verse 11, it says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Can you see that? Who raised Jesus? The Holy Spirit. And I say he will raise you. He will raise you. He will raise your family. He will raise your children. He will raise your business. He will raise your destiny. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the grave dwells in your mortal body, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. We leave that for later time. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Can somebody shout hallelujah? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. Let me say it this way. There are so many blessings. This resurrection portends for us. And I want to try and rush through some. And um, I trust your eyes shall open. I want you not to be distracted any bit. Open up your whole capacity to embrace what heaven is saying. To embrace what God has to offer. Praise the Lord. And you will not be the same again. Praise the Lord. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, let's start gradually. 1 Corinthians 15. That is the scripture of resurrection. The whole of that chapter, when you get back home, please go read it. I read from verse 4. It says, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. I want to say this to believers. There are many occasions in our lives we feel the Old Testament is gone. So let's forget it. But let me say this to you. The early church did not have the New Testament. Am I right? They only had the scriptures. They only had the Old Testament. Yet, the wonders that were wrought through them, why, by virtue of the scriptures they knew in the Old Testament. What a miracle. Genesis to Malachi was talking about one man, Jesus. You will find it in Genesis, in Exodus, in, Levit uh, in Numbers, in Leviticus, etc., etc., Deuteronomy, till you get to Malachi. You find him there. Jesus is the reason, is the superstar that the Bible was talking about. So when Paul was speaking here, according to scriptures, who is scripture? Is it Matthew? Is it Luke? No. It's according to scriptures in the Old Testament. That's all they had. Praise the Lord. And for your information, the, old, the New Testament only came to attest and fulfill the old. Jesus said, I've not come to do what? To abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Everything written in the old was a pointer to the new. It was a pointer of the fact that somebody is coming. Hallelujah. And so, number one blessing that the resurrection brought it, it gives us a lively hope that the word of God is true. By virtue of his resurrection, the word of God was proved potent and alive. 
Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? So, when you run through scripture, you will discover that the resurrection, the crucifixion, etc., were mentioned in scriptures. Even some characters in the Old Testament foresaw it, predicted it. I want to attempt to pick a few scriptures very quickly. And then we'll go from there to other blessings that the resurrection brings to the saint. Psalm 16. From verse 8. We need to be quick, so please follow. It says, I have set the Lord always before me, because it at my right hand I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory re rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou will not leave thy soul, I mean my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Thou will show me the path of life. In thy, presence, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So this scripture is a prophecy. His body will not see corruption. Psalm 71 Psalm 71, let's read verses 20 and 21. It says, Thou which has shown the great and has shown me great and sore troubles, shall quicken me again, and shall bring me up from the depths of the earth. And thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. This is a prophetic word. Of the fact that he will rise. Can somebody shout hallelujah? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we read. 1 Corinthians 15 that we just read. Verse 4. It says, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. According to the scripture. And he was sin of Cephas. If you go down, the Bible is say, we also shall rise. Hallelujah. Because we are spirit beings, we shall rise. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. So you also will rise. A fulfillment of scriptures. Let me quickly go forward. Abraham also had the inkling of the coming Savior. In the book of Genesis chapter 17, when he was to offer Isaac, what did he say? The Lord will provide for himself a what? A lamb. That's talking about Jesus, the lamb of God, as we read in Isaiah 53. So even Abraham had a glimpse. Job also, in Job chapter 19, let's look at 25 and 26. And it's so interesting, it's glorious. The greatest hope of the saints is the fact that he arose. If he did not rise, our faith is vain. When you go back and read 1 Corinthians 15 downwards, you will see all this. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19, if only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all men, most what? Most miserable. There is hope after now. We are not doing what we are doing just to enjoy on earth. No, we are going yonder. We are going to see him. Hallelujah. And any believer who does not have this hope is either not saved or has lost his salvation. Our greatest joy is that we will see him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the ridicule, the death on the cross, because he could see something above. In John chapter 17, the same Jesus said, glorify me now. With the glory which I had with you from the beginning. Oh, dearly beloved, there's a better future awaiting us. No matter how much you enjoy or not, it is nothing compared with what heaven has in stock for you. Job chapter 19, from verse 25. It says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and though after my skin once destroyed this body, 
Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. Now look at it. Job had this revelation. He had this faith. One day I'm going to see him. The only reason is because this same God, the Redeemer, liveth. Hallelujah. Because the Redeemer liveth, Job was saying, I'm going to see him physically. And every believer, this is one unique blessing. Because he arose, one day I will see him. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I don't know how many will see him. I will see him. That is the blessing. It gives us great hope. Amen. Job was basing his resurrection on the fact that Jesus will rise. And Jesus rose. Jesus is alive. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And he arose by the spirit. Dearly beloved, if you must rise, it must be by the spirit. That's why you can't really get the Holy Spirit to the background. Just like wind, like this, like that. You need to become knitted with him. You need to be in perfect harmony with him. To be in perfect fellowship with him. You need to be knitted with him perfectly. It's only then that you can rise. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Isaiah chapter 26. Now, just note something about the resurrection. This resurrection, it beats them hands down. He didn't resurrect and went hiding. No. The Bible says he showed himself to many through infallible proofs. He came to the apostles. He walked with them. He gave them revelation. Their eyes were open. He broke bread with them. Praise God. He also said, oh, yeah, touch my hand. See. So you will know that it's not a ghost. It is real me. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Our Lord is truly alive. And he alone is the one that is alive. All others died and we know their grave. But the tomb of Jesus is empty because he arose. And because he arose, you shall rise also. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 26 verse 19, which became fulfilled in Matthew 27. Let's look at that Isaiah first. Isaiah 26 verse 19. Okay. Um, Thy dead man shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing. Ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs. And the earth shall cast out the dead. Can somebody shout hallelujah? That's a prophetic word. They will rise as I rise. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, we see this fulfilled. Matthew 27, from verse 50. What a glorious event. It says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the, the graves were opened, and many bodies of saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Can somebody shout hallelujah? He rose. The dead rose with him. Can you imagine your grandfather just walking to your bedroom? Hallelujah. Your mom, your beloved mom coming and showing up. Just show himself. I mean, showing herself. Your dad that had died, and you have even forgotten he died. Just coming up. That's what happened on the resurrection. Because the resurrection and the life came up. Definitely. The stint of life was released to the graves. And they came up. And they went showing themselves. Everybody said, hey, I saw uncle. Oh, I saw daddy came today, etc. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now that was sample to show us that one day we shall rise. We shall rise. Nothing will hold back. Even those cremated will come again. It will let their bodies return. Praise the Lord. 
What a magnificent God we serve. Hallelujah. If you read Matthew 27, you see that's exactly what happened from verse 5. Okay, we've just read that now. So the saints rose with him to fulfill Isaiah 26 verse 19. Amen. They rose with him. They were seen by people in Jerusalem. In Osea 6, 1 to 2, we see the Jews fulfilling Ezekiel's prophecy. In the book of Ezekiel. In Hosea 13, 14, let's just have that. Hosea 13, verse 14. It says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plague. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentant shall he shall be healed from my eyes. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now, now listen, something significant happened on the resurrection morning. He who his life died. Hallelujah. How can life die? And life will remain dead. It's impossible. It should be noted, the devil committed the greatest error. Because by Christ, all things hold together. How can you hold him that holds you? It was not possible. Because Jesus is the one by whom all things consist. He holds all things together. How can death now hold him? How can life die and not be up again? When Jesus died, death died. Because he holds all things together. And that meant by the death and the resurrection of Christ, death became destroyed. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, it says, I'm he that is alive and was, I'm he that is alive and was dead, and I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of hell and of death. He had plagued death. That's why he could take the key. From then, death does not have the final say. Jesus holds the key. In custody in our favor. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? By virtue of Christ's death, death was swallowed up in victory. First Corinthians uh, chapter 15. I think verse 58 or so. Or no, 56 or 55. Hallelujah. It's swallowed up. So death, for everyone under the fear of death, here in this day, death has been swallowed. It's only a lie. It's only ignorance that will make you to be chicken out on death. He, he gave you a, a dream that you are dying. Tell him you don't have the key. Hallelujah. He does not have the key. Death has been swallowed up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when he who is life died, death died. How can the grave hold him who holds all things? It's impossible. Praise the Lord. Colossians 1 17 tells us by him all things consist. In one word by him, he holds all things. Amen? So this same word that was made flesh. Listen, one reason why the earth could not swallow his body. His body is not earthly. It didn't come from the dust. The spirit of God came upon Mary. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God did what? Came upon Mary. So man was not involved. That's why anything earthly inherits sin. He doesn't have to sin. He's already he computed into him. But this, his body, though physical you can see him, but it's a glorified or a spiritual body. It has nothing to do with the earth. So the earth can't swallow. It did not have its origin on earth. So it cannot remain on earth. Can somebody shout hallelujah? These are part of the mysteries of the resurrection. The earth could not swallow him up. That's why the Bible says, you will not let my body suffer corruption. And that's why on the resurrection morning, 
The devil lost it. Had he gotten this revelation, he would not attempt to kill him. Praise the Lord. Because killing Jesus was killing death. Killing Jesus was killing the devil himself. Rendering him ineffective, null and void. And I say over your life, by virtue of his resurrection, death has no more power over you. 1 Corinthians 15, let's look at it very quickly. Before I go to talk of other blessings, we have just picked one. Well, if we can't finish all, we stop wherever we can stop. Praise God. Now it says, um, okay, let me read verse, from verse 51 so we can get the understanding. It says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the ticket of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Death swallowed up in what? In victory. Amen? It says, O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the Lord. But is the law. But thanks be to God, we give it us victory over, I mean, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout hallelujah? We have victory. We have victory over the sting of death, which is sin. Amen? Because he arose. Amen? So, we can run through that. Let me just give you a few scriptures that you can just uh, look at. Zechariah 14, 4, where you go back home, so we can go to point number two. Um, uh, John, Jude 14, John 5, 25 and 28, Ephesians 2, 1, and, okay, some of these will come up in the order uh, points. Let me quickly go to point number two. So the first one, he fulfills the scriptures. I hope you know every detail. Those who understand mathematics, what we call permutation, the more the possibilities, the tougher the possibility of his fulfillment. So if there are 100 prophecies, it means there is one over a hundred of all being fulfilled. But if all are fulfilled, it becomes... So the less the probabilities, praise God. I'm sure you understand that. So if there are 1,000 prophecies and all must be fulfilled, it is tougher than if there are only two prophecies. Yet all the prophecies, they came to pass one after the other. Oh, Hallelujah. The word of God is true. It's incorruptible. It's everlasting. It's strong. It's real. Because that same word is Jesus. So number two point, resurrection establishes our justification from sin as if we never sinned before. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4 from verse 22 and I want you to open up your heart. Because there are so many people, even after salvation, they are still standing under condemnation. They are still, people are still making them believe they are not saved. And they themselves see their wretchedness, they are looking at the past. But the Bible makes us to understand in, Re in Romans 4, 22 to 25. It says, and therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. For it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Hallelujah. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. Let me just speak that. 
The Bible says, Blessed is he to whom God imputes not iniquity. Then in Psalm 133 and 4, if thou will mark iniquity, nobody will be able to stand, but there is forgiveness with God. By virtue of Christ's death, hallelujah, and his resurrection, the believers have, we have established justification. His resurrection establishes our justification from sin, as if we never sinned before. Praise the Lord. It wipes away our record. And now we are standing justified. Can somebody shout hallelujah? What a joy that you are no more carrying condemnation. That you are a child of God. No matter what you have done before. That's one blessing that accrues to the saints. Number two. The resurrection of Jesus establishes our membership of the house of God. What a security. Because he arose. You are established as a member of the household of God. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. 10 and 11. It says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and they that sanctified are all one. Of which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. What a unique privilege. He calls us brothers because we have been qualified. We are now members of the house of God. We are secured. And that house is a glorious house. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians 2, verse 19, it says, Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God. Hallelujah. I don't know if you are finding joy in this fact. You are now a member of the household of God. Amen. No longer an alien. Somebody alienated. You are not a stranger. You are now inside. Praise the Lord. You are now a member of the body. Amen. Let's look at what happens in the house. In the body. In the household. Psalm 132. 13 to 16. And this should be your portion. If you are in the house. If you are in that household. This should be your portion. This should be your blessing. Don't bargain for anything less. From verse 13. It says, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He had desired it for his habitation. He, he dwells in, in the, that's where he dwells. It says, this is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless our provision. This will be your portion. I will just, I will satisfy her poor with bread. You are not supposed to be who are in the house. He says, I will also clothe our priests with salvation and our saints shall shout aloud for joy. Joy should not be lacking in your life. This part of what the resurrection secured. He says, there will I make the horn. Okay. Okay, I will also, verse 16, I think it's okay. So you can see the blessings from 13. He has chosen Zion. Zion is his habitation. So you are in the house where he dwells. You are in the household of the dwelling of the Lord. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy at his right hand are what? Pleasures forever. And then he says he will give you rest forever. You are supposed to be at rest. Every believer. Whatsoever makes you to do like a cocoa, you know, you are just doing like this, like an oscillating pendulum, it's not your portion. You have to have rest. Because you are dwelling in security. You are dwelling in safety. You are dwelling where God makes his habitation. Hallelujah. I command everything troubling you to be troubled today. And to bow out in the name of Jesus. Every believer who understands the fact that he arose is supposed to enjoy this benefit. It is your portion. And this day henceforth, you will enjoy it in Jesus' name. 
He says, He says, this is my rest forever. Where we, for here will I dwell, for I have desired it. He says, I will abundantly bless her provision. Provision, your bread must be given you, your water must be sure. Hallelujah. This is your heritage. And I want you to believe the Lord from today. We are going to be praying on these things. From today, you will not lack bread. You will not lack peace. You will not lack joy. That is what God as promised. In 1 Timothy 5, 8, he says, he who does not provide for his house has denied the faith. He's worse than an infidel. God is too responsible not to provide for his house. You are a member of that house. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And from today, by virtue of his resurrection, the floodgate of heaven will open and his blessing begins to reach you in Jesus' name. Now, the resurrection establishes our open access into the truth. Amen? Open access into the truth. Because when he gave up the ghost, what happened? The Bible says the curtain was torn into two. The Holy of Holies was a place where people never got to only the high priest once a year. And he must have made atonement for his sin, for the sins of the whole nation. Woe betide that high priest who goes frivolously. But by the time he gave up the post, ghost, the temple veil, tall, became open. Now we could see the table, the manna, the pot, the rod. Everything that had either to be secret became open to us. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now we have access into revelation. The revelations of heaven. The happenings over there. That's what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. So every believer, there's nothing hidden anymore. Nothing is hidden. The heaven is open. Revelation has become a reality for your life. Revelation about what is troubling you. Revelation about any incident that is not clear. Now the curtain is torn. We have access. We can see. From today, you will have revelation. Revelation galore. You begin to see. Nothing will be hidden from you. They will not hide to suffer you anymore. Can somebody shout hallelujah? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. It says, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant, Hebrews 9, 4, overlaid round about with gold. We and it was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. Those are mysteries. Each has its own spiritual, unique revelation. What it portends. Hallelujah. Now you can see. The Israelites never could see. They never knew what was inside. Maybe they were just told in that place, so, so, and so. But now you can see. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? What a wonderful God we serve. Amen? So, in Luke 24, 45, when Jesus rose, the first thing he did was open the eyes. They were on the way to him house. And they were saying, hey, they were disputing among themselves. Hey, can you imagine? He's dead now. But we thought he would be with us. He was there. They were talking. They were talking. Then along the line, after I gave them bread, what happens? Their eyes were open. He said, ah. And then they saw. From today you will see. No more darkness. There will be revelation. There will be light. You begin to see the things that are freely given to you. Each time you open the Bible, the Holy Spirit will unveil the mind of God to you. No more secrecy. Can somebody shout hallelujah? This is our heritage. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 3. Arise and shine. Your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. There might be darkness covering the whole world. But you will arise. You will shine. Because your light has come. No man has right to shine until his light has come. By virtue of his resurrection, light has come. Light has come. And by that light, you will go far. By that light, you will possess your possession. 
By that light, you will have the upper hand over the adversary. By that light, you will progress. By that light, you will be a winner. By that light, everything hindering you shall give way in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? These are blessings that accrue by virtue of resurrection. Not talking about the rhetoric that you went to the cross, you went, we already know that one happened. But what is our take? What was the reason for the resurrection? These are the blessings. And when we understand it, something changes. Hallelujah. Something changes. Light cannot come and you remain at the same level. Light causes man to shine. Light causes man to make progress. I prophesy this light will move you forward. You will not remain at the same level from today. By the power of his resurrection. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And you all know what the Bible tells us in Hosea 4, 6. Isaiah 5, 13. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And in that Isaiah 5, 13, it says, Therefore my people are gone into captivity. You will, a believer will remain in captivity when he lacks knowledge. These truths are real. Meditate, think on them, then appropriate and receive. And then you just see yourself above board. Hallelujah. Then you see yourself no more in darkness. Nobody can hide to suffer you. The Holy Spirit will give you light. He will give you instruction. From today, you will shine. From today, you will shine. You will no more remain in obscurity. Another blessing of the resurrection the resurrection quickens our body unto health and vitality. This is a unique blessing. Please, I'd like to say this. You are not permitted as a member of the body to be sickly. It is anathema. It's not supposed to be. Hallelujah. We read from Romans chapter 8 the other time. The Bible says, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body, that same spirit will do what? We quicken. Now, this is part of the heritage of the children of God. These are part of the blessing that accrues when you open up with the Holy Spirit, the quickening spirit of God. Hallelujah. Then that your earthly mortal body becomes spiritual body. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Life is put into you. Amen. You bite into divinity. So it's no longer buge buge. You, have, you, are, you are falling and rising like a, 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 what's it, a Greek fowl. That's not supposed to be your portion. And I'm praying your spirit man will reject incessant sickness in your body today. You will bite into divinity. And the quickening spirit of God will quicken your mortal body. And it will become another body completely. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 15. Let's look at it. If you choose to retain the earthly body and go there, we are mortal. We cannot be of a falling sick. You know? Some people also believe that malaria is our disease in Africa. It's our disease in Nigeria. It will be your own, but it's not my own. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? And there's somebody in the house today, the, the enemy truth Malaria has been troubling you, troubling you. You can reject, you can walk out today. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You can walk out today. I've told you this story before. I'm AA, everybody in my family is AA. There was a period my wife was thinking I was AS. I don't know, mosquitoes bite her, not me, most times. 99% of the time. Just a few days ago, they beat me too. At my back. They just do chum like this. Like if needle, pain. But every time, mosquito is biting her. And then she said, you also, it's biting all of us together, but there must be a reason we are not falling sick. No malaria. It's because you are AS. <laughs> me, I didn't know what was my group. I didn't know. So one day I went to donate blood, and they told me my group that is AA. I said, can you see? Everyone who is having this notion, I am falling sick because some will even say it's our family sickness. Today you will lose that sickness. That sickness will walk out from you. That sickness will be threatened today. And it will, just, it will just leave you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? 
as you buy it into the world, as you read the word, as you study the word, some divine vaccines are being put into you. Antibodies, hallelujah. You are being immune. And I prophesy, by virtue of the resurrection from today, you are not an object of sickness anymore. The resurrection power brings perfect healing to your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? First Corinthians 15. Let's look at verse 44. He says, Just a minute, I think it should be before them. Okay, let's read from, from verse 38. But God, God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. I pray your own flesh will transit today. He says, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the celestial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another in, in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is only corruption, and it is reaped in in corruption. It is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You can transit to a spiritual body. Amen? By virtue of the resurrection. The Bible says if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the grave dwells in your mother body. That same spirit we do what? We quickly. We give it life. Hallelujah. It becomes a spiritual body. Do physically everybody is seeing you. That's why man past man. Body is different from body. I prophesy by faith today by virtue of his resurrection. May you bite, bite into divinity. You become empowered supernaturally. So that you just be query Lolo Gonji in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Have you started to imagine the kind of body John had? The John that brought revelation in the book of Revelation. They beat him. They did everything. They beat him to die. He refused to die. They put him in a boiling oil. Ah, ah, ah. No, there's what they call first, second, third, or fourth degree of burnt. If they boil oil to maybe 100 degrees Celsius and they pour it from head to toe, that person is not likely to survive. But they put him inside a container of oil, burnt it and burnt it and burnt it, or boiled it and boiled it and boiled it. And then they brought, brought him out. He was still breathing. Can somebody shout hallelujah? That was a spiritual body. I prophesy the same become your portion. So when they had no answer to it, they could not kill him. So they threw him to an island. Maybe animals, how, how, how can animals eat, eat that oil could not even burn? Can somebody shout hallelujah? On the island of Patmos, he saw the Lord. And he brought us revelation that is unparalleled. What a spiritual body. Today, that shall be your portion. That shall become your portion. This is our heritage as saints of God. And this is what we should go on for. Don't ever think otherwise. Do you remember in Daniel chapter 3 verse 27? Three people were thrown into fire. Thrown into fire. And they expect them to burn. But something mysterious happened. The fourth man entered. Hallelujah. The Bible says, fire comes from him and divorce. So how can their own fire burn his own fire? Hallelujah. It's impossible. So the fourth man went with them. Because they honored him. They said, okay, no, we are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. For our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Even if he doesn't deliver us, we are not changing our mind. And Jehovah, the Godhead must have said, oh my goodness. Somebody has to go down there. Hallelujah. And it was Jesus. That's Theophany. Jesus appearing. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament. And he, he was with them. And people say, ah, 
We threw three people in. We can see four. Hallelujah. And when they brought them out, they were not even smelling of smoke. There's something unique about the God you serve. If only your eyes can open, you will not be subject to all the evil, all the wiles of the devil. You will not be an object of ridicule being tossed to and fro. The Bible says they were not smelling of smoke. The fourth man showed up. And are you aware? If that was in the Old Testament. Now, both the first, the second, and the third, they indwell you. You are a carrier of God by the Holy Spirit. If that happened to the man in the Old Testament that was done away with, how much more the new? Hallelujah. A new everlasting covenant that cannot be removed, that cannot be revoked. I say to you, what you carry is more than what you think. The Almighty indwells you because of the resurrection. You are not meant to be molested. You are not meant to be brought under. You are not an object of a foot mat. You are greater than everyone that is in the world. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So when we are talking about the resurrection, it's not about new clothing. It's not about eating chicken or turkey. It's not about making journeys. It's about realizing what the resurrection stands for. And when you get it, you become above board. You can walk out on sickness. You can rebel against disease. The doctors might have said anything. Doctors' report can change by the resurrection. It can change by embracing revelation. When it dawns on you, when the word of God comes alive in your life, something changes. You become an enigma. You become a touch knot. You become a thunder. Hallelujah. You become somebody above molestation. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? And do you know the Bible tells us? When he died, we died with him. And then we rose with him in baptism. Which means we are already, we are already with him. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. That's why the Bible says if any man be in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 17. He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's why an injurious man to his generation like Saul of Tarsus encountered him. <laughs> and there was a reverser. Everything turned around. Up to today, Paul is still teaching. Paul is still living. That shall be your portion. You will not die unsung. You will not die molested. You will not die a local champion. You will not die just in that corner. You will not die stagnated. You will not die in sickness. You will not die like an obnoxious person. You will reign in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Another point. I think that sh this should be number six. Huh? Huh? Six, yes. It, the resurrection unveils access to God, to God's plan and purpose for our lives. The resurrection opens us to God's purpose and access. I mean, it gives us access to God's plan and purpose for our lives. That's why in Acts chapter 9, on the way to Damascus, this man was going with authority letter to hound and put in prison the people that were speaking in that name. The resurrection showed up. Hallelujah. He encountered him. The light brighter than noon sun light. He encountered the light. That's why a few, two weeks or so ago we said, let there be light. It's not light of the sun. Hallelujah. That is life. So he who is the giver of life came to contact him. And he said, why persecuted thou me? He says, who art thou, Lord? <laughs> He says, I am the Lord. And God, that encounter revealed to Saul why he was born. And he was given the purpose for which he must live. And what he will suffer. And it came to pass to the letter. I prophesy by, this by the resurrection power. May your eyes open. May you have access to his plan and purpose for your life. 
So you can walk in it. You can be in the center of it. Since I knew my calling as a person, you say, listen, you don't want to be a medical doctor and you are busy going for seminar on religious knowledge. You are busy going for knowledge or trying to do seminar and all sorts of things on, uh, what's it called? Uh, maybe filmmaking. You are wasting your time. Once you know the plan of God for your life, you pursue it. You pursue it. You follow. Anything that is not in consonance with this purpose, I let it go. Even business cannot take me out of this purpose. We are not living to eat. We are only, li we are only eating to live. Business should not be for life. Oh, that's the reason I'm living. No, you are not living for business. You are living for a purpose. By the resurrection power of God today, you will locate your place. You will find the plan of God for your life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? In John 21, Jesus, the resurrection, came to Peter. Peter, love thou me more than this, asked him three times for conviction. Love thou me more than this, Going back a fishing is not your purpose. He discovered it. Until the day of death, he never went back a fishing. May God open our eyes. May we see. That's the essence of the resurrection. It is the blessing that accrues to us that we should look for. Embrace them. Walk in them. And then your life will gain ascendancy. You are not meant to be low. You are not meant to be ordinary. The more the revelation of God you get, the better you become. The more like him you become. The resurrection releases the believer from all forms of captivities. The resurrection delivers you from captivity. All forms. Can you remember in Matthew 27 that we have already read from verse 50? When he rose, don't also forget in the Old Testament we saw it, that he will rise with the dead, hallelujah, and then it became fulfilled in Matthew 27. And when he rose, grave could not hold them bound. Anyone in any grave today, you will come out. They came out. Let me say this. In all of life, when we talk about bondage, the enemy can keep you down. But by the time the devil kills a man and he goes into the grave, what happens? He has finished the work. Abby, finished. So, in the grave, grave can mean so many things. Hallelujah. It can be buried talent, buried de destiny. Hallelujah. Everything about you looks shrouded. Is just Everything is not, not clear. It means deliverance from confusion. Hallelujah. They all came out. It also means being taken out of obscurity. You are no more supposed to be obscure. Somebody in the grave is no more visible. Am I right? No more visible. Everything that has buried your glory by the power of the resurrection, they shall lift up themselves. Your glory will show up again in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's another blessing. And then in Hebrews 2 verse 3, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Listen, there is no escape route if we don't give credence to these truths. You are not meant to be bound anymore by virtue of the resurrection. The enemy is not supposed to be stepping on you. You are not supposed to be under his feet. He says, how shall we escape? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. If we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him. Hallelujah. So, the fact that you are born again, the fact that he rose from the grave, guarantees your release 
Hallelujah. From every captivity. And today you shall be released. It could be bad dreams. It could be hard luck. It could be evil. It could be hatred from various people. You are just shrouded. You are just hooked up. You are tied. You seem, uh, what do I call it? Stagnated. But by the anointing this morning, you shall be released. Because he arose. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And that's why the Bible says, Colossians 1.30, he had delivered us from what? From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of what? Of his dear son, into that of light. Delivered. Please, it is your heritage as a child of God. Hallelujah. Quickly, he also, the resurrection offers peace that passes all understanding. All understanding. I want to say this, after salvation, if the salvation is genuine, the first thing, you just have peace, cool air. You just have peace, cool air. Your mind will just settle. You are not perturbed. That's why when Fante was to be born, I didn't want anything that would rob my peace. Just you take the headache, let me just be an under shepherd so I can sleep. I've never been sleepless one day because of any situation. I pass it to him. Nobody has the capacity to resist the gates of hell. He alone has the capacity. That's why I said I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So when you own the church, then you go and fight the gates of hell. But when he owns the church, he will fight the gates of hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, salvation. Now, even in John chapter 20, 18 to 21, we see resur resurrection is the seal of our peace. The fact that he arose. Maybe when you get back home, you can read that. Let's look at John 14, 27. John 14, verse 27. The kind of peace that will make a man to sleep even in the midst of storm. I hope you remember there was storm. Master, care us not that, that we perish. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. I believe he wasn't snoring because his ear waves will be clear. Nothing can obstruct it. So he can't snore. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Sleeping and enjoy himself. And the people said, ah, what kind of thing? Just like Jonah was doing his own. In his own case, it was suicide. Do you understand? It was suicide that Jonah was waiting for. He just went, probably he took some pills. Sleeping pills. So he was just, just sleeping. I believe he was snoring too. Praise God. Because he was a sinner. So he's like, well, cuckoo kill me. Cuckoo kill me. Cuckoo kill me. Kill me. So he went sleeping. But in the case of Jesus, he was sleeping from a vantage position. You can't kill him. Who is life? The one who saw all things together. Who is the light of life? He lightens everyone that comes to the world. You can't kill him. He woke up and said, ah, why are you of little faith? And he said, peace be still. Can somebody shout hallelujah? In that Luke 14, verse 27, he says, peace I live with you, and my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled, neither be it afraid. Can somebody shout Hallelujah. No reason. Tell the person else to so say no shaking. Because he arose, no shaking. Hallelujah. The peace that the world can give. In Philippians 4 7, he says, And the peace of God that passeth all understanding will keep your heart and what? And mine. Listen to me, dearly beloved. When you are walking in the word of God, you are walking in faith. You are living right. You are not supposed to be perturbed. Wuru, 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 wuru. Peace removes stress. Don't live a stressed life. Calm down. I think there's this Yoruba age, uh, something simple to achieve, like what God has hand in. Difficult to achieve, like what God doesn't have hand in. When everything is just not working, calm down. Go back to the spirit of God and listen. Am I in the center of God's will? All things work together for good to them that love him. 
to them who do what? Who walk according to his purpose. When you are in the purpose of God, you are supposed to have the peace of God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I come against every stress in your life today. The Lord will help you. And then, resurrection reposition the believer to dominion in the adventures of life. Dominion. Dominion. You are over. You are victorious. You are achieving. You make it. Everything is working. While others are failing, you are succeeding. Where others are laid back, you are making progress. That is your heritage. I pray you will go back and think on this message. Think on these scriptures. Read them. Digest them. Embrace them. Meditate on them. And then take your stand and say, this is my portion. Hallelujah. Life never gives you what you deserve. It gives you only what you demand. You place demand on life. Life will give it to you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I remember for years, we were living from hand to mouth. Everything was tough and tight. And then I look back. You didn't call me to full time. I'm walking. I'm this. Everything. And then I said, okay, oh Lord, you who called me into this profession. Let me have something to show. You see, until you get to a point where you can place demand. I just imagine... If we were just managing and we were man we would still be managers today. Manager that didn't do managerial course. If we are managing, managing. May you stop to manage from today. May the abundance of God be your portion. We have to confront it head on. The God that cannot lie. The God who is ever faithful. He proved himself. And I see him proving himself in your life. But many times we are too complacent. We are very easy. We are mild. You know. I'm drove. Gentle. And then we are managing. I'm full. But today you will rebel. And as you rebel, the devil will bow. Something will change. That uncompleted building can be completed. You can buy a land. You can buy a car. You can be promoted. You can become an, a, an owner of business. Your Lord can change. You can take your proper place as the head of your home. Having what the head should have. But when you just say, well, uh, uh, let a woman drive snake, let somebody kill it. It's just that the snake should not escape. Uh, that's the way some people think, you know. Uh, it's just that let the house be fed. Even if it is my wife that is feeding us, that's okay. Let's just, you will remain like that. But there's a way you can say, Lord, I want to take my place. Hallelujah. Don't be a chipito who uses calculator to calculate the increase of the salary of your wife and planning how it will be spent. Take your proper place. I'm challenging you today. You can be on top. No matter how far your wife has gone, you can overtake her. Hallelujah. So you say, darling, this is what I want. You say, yes, sir. Listen, when money no day now, wow. Praise the Lord. And I tell you something, money is important. Now some people will think, well, but the woman is, is high up. She's any millions. What's my own inside? My own is little. The woman will still want your own. Because they are created as collectors. And you woman that is so proud and cocky, tell them with your money. You are not fulfilling your purpose. You are supposed to be a collector. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You collect. Keep collecting. Hallelujah. And men we keep giving because why we keep giving them. Praise the Lord. This is your heritage. Dominion. Dominion. I hope you know we are seated with him in heavenly places. When he rose, we rose with him. When he died, we died with him. When he rose, we rose with him. And we are now at the right hand of the Father. We are on the throne. The level where decisions are made. In those days, they say SMC, Supreme Military Council. That's where they took all decisions in the military era. We are in this SMC of heaven. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. That's our heritage. Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. And then Philippians 2, verse 10. Hallelujah. This is our portion. Dominion became sealed by the resurrection. Amen? 
All that the devil wishes for you becomes null and void by virtue of the resurrection. The devil was smashed. Became, became non grata. Became nothing. Amen? The devil had no answer to him. The Bible talks of the incorruptible word or the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. That's who Jesus is. That's why they could not bury, I mean, they could not swallow him up in the grave. The incorruptible seed that is everlasting, that's the same that dwells in you. Hallelujah. He said, the word that I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. When the word of God dwells in you, the incorruptible seed dwells in you. You are no longer an object of ridicule. No molestation. And I prophesy that becomes your portion from today. Every time the word of God jumps at you, something changes. I remember Philippians 4.19. We were living in uh, Ola Ogun at that time. When that scripture came, it was the early years of our wedding. Maybe the first two, one or two. Oh, that revelation was something. From that day, I stopped looking out for the budget of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I started looking up. My source is above. Above is higher than abroad. And from then till today, he has been our supplier. Hallelujah. That is revelation. It comes. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall what? Shall be added. You see, when it has not done on you, that's when you are making work of God second class. My business, my business. Business that can leave you. Business that can die. You can labor and not gather anything. It's not how much you end that matters. It's how much you're able to retain. And what you do with what you retain. So, your service unto God does so much. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I just want to give you this assignment. Go back home. Read Matthew chapter 5, 9 to 12. Now that caps up seven covenant blessings that resurrection brought for the saints. Number one, it brought power to walk in dominion. It brought riches, wisdom, Strength. Strength to withstand external aggression. Honor. Shame and reproach rolled away. That's why I've never, even when something says hey, shame will come, if it remains a second, God will thwart it. It cannot come. He said, they that put their trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. We cannot be moved, but abide there forever. Hallelujah. Shame nullified. Honor come in his place. Then glory. Then blessing. Go back. I will have given you the scriptures that I don't want to give you. On these seven points, look at scriptures that correspond. And that would be a good homework. Look at scriptures that correspond. Then claim them. I am the Lord that God that giveth the power to what? To get wealth. These are the blessings that accrues to the saints by virtue of salvation. However, they can't accrue to you except you are born again. Jesus secured all this. The primary purpose was to let power change hand, was to turn us to another man, another woman. If any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. If you are not saved, you need to be saved. And once you are saved, then you can pray these prayers that we are about to pray. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Everybody, while all eyes are bowed, all eyes are closed. You are here this morning. You are saying, Jesus, I want to be born again on this resurrection day. Because these blessings are too much. I want them. You can just raise your hand above your head this resurrection morning. Raise your hand above your head. You are saying, Jesus, I need you in my life. I want to be born again. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Can just raise your hand above your head. And then we'll pray for you. And those who are at home, wherever you are, just draw close and pray this prayer from me. Say, Father, I come as I am. I'm a sinner. 
and I want to be saved by your grace. I open up my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Come into my heart and take control of my life. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father in heaven, I ask you to answer this request to the letter. You is able to do exceeding abundantly above what they ask or think. Go beyond their request and see to it that they end up in the kingdom. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Try and join a living church. If you are here, you can just join us. We assure you, we will we'll lead you in the path of life. Can we all rise on our feet? Let's rise on our feet. And what we are going to do is to pick a point in one minute, and then you can go back again and appropriate them and get the blessings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we ready? So what was the first thing we found? That the word of God. Now the first thing we saw was that the Holy Spirit is the one that raised Jesus from the grave. Am I right? So he alone can raise you. He alone can take you from where. Every blessing that God has to offer in Christ by virtue of his resurrection can only come by the Holy Spirit. Do you all agree with me? So lift up your hands and wave it and adore the Holy Spirit. Praise him, worship him, adore him, magnify his name. He's beautiful, he's sweet. And I want you to covenant your life from today. Lord, I want to be in harmony with you, Spirit Divine. Yes. Yes, I want to be in fellowship, koinonia, perfectly. Yes, sweet spirit. Spirit of the living God. Yes, I adore you. I reference you. Thank you. From today, you have your right of way in my life, in all my affairs, and forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you for the resurrection. By it, it is certain. The word of God is true. The resurrection fulfilled every author of the scriptures. Open your mouth and give thanks to God and begin to confess, I believe your word. I hold to every word of God because the word of God is true. Yes, it confirms that God is real. God is true. The word we have is living, incorruptible seed. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, these other prayers, let's pick them one after the other, even if it's just one, one minute, but it's a pattern of prayer. You go back home, spend time. It could be two or three you can pick today, or look for those ones that are relevant to your life. Hallelujah. Resurrection establishes justification from sin as if we've never sinned. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to bind every spirit that's making you doubt salvation. Hallelujah. And begin to assure yourself, thank you, Jesus, because by resurrection, my salvation is established. My sins are forgiven. As if I've never sinned. Lord, I give you glory. I have no reason to doubt. I'm a child of God. I'm forgiven. Yes, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I exalt your name. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I reference you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I magnify your name. You are beautiful beyond description. Yes, forgiveness of sins. Thank you. My sins are passed over. I give you glory, Lord. I give you honor. I give you majesty. I give you adoration. You are faithful and true. What a mighty God we serve. If there be any doubt concerning your sin, ask for the mercy of the Lord the blood to blot them out now and to keep you in assurance that you are a child of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now, this, the other point says, resurrection establishes our membership of the house of God. What is security? I'm a member of the body. I'm established in the house. And in the house, there's joy, there's blessing, there's security, there's protection. He says, he that house is his habitation. Hallelujah. 
Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Let this truth dawn on me from today. Wherever I find myself, I will not feel like I'm alone. I am the habitation of God. Jehovah indwells. I'm a member of the house. And in the house, God is too responsible to fail. He has provision in the house. Lift up your voice. From today, I will lack nothing good. Yes. Yes, I'm a member of the body. Yes. Yes, I'm in the household of faith. We are God is too responsible to fail. Yes, he said, he will bless. He will give peace. He will give joy. He will give bread. Yes, I'm not supposed to lack anything because I'm a member of the household of faith. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Resurrection establishes open access to the truth. I'm going to lift up your voice from today, Lord. I begin to have light. I begin to know the truth. In the name of Jesus, from today, I begin to get the truth, the truth, the truth. Nothing will be hidden. No falsehood in my life. Truth, truth. I have access to the truth. In any area of my life that needs the truth today, I receive light. In the name of Jesus. I myself must live in truth. No lying in my life. Because I have access to the truth. Yes, I will only speak the truth. I will live the truth. Yes, from today I have revelation from heaven. Revelation for the truth. Yes, the treasures of heaven begin to open to you now. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Now, res the resurrection brings quickening of our mortal body. That body becomes a spiritual body. I want you to begin to ask the quickening spirit to quicken your body from sickness and disease. Diseases to die. Sicknesses to die. Quicken my body. Let it no longer be earthly. Let it become spiritual house. In the name of Jesus. Quicken, 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 quicken. Quickness spirit. Quicken my body. Make sure you are praying. Quicken my body. Anything dead, come alive. Nothing is permitted to die in my body. Quickness spirit. By virtue of the resurrection. Quicken this body. Quicken my body. When your body is quickened, it will not be able to be damaged. John was boiled in hot oil, yet he never died. Nothing will be able to terminate your life. Quickening spirit of God, quicken my mortal body. Quicken, 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 quicken. When you are quickened, diseases and viruses will not be able to terminate your life. Receive a quickening. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Can you say, Father, by virtue of the resurrection, unveil your plan and purpose for my life. Yes, begin to speak. Open your mouth. Unveil your plan and purpose for my life. Let me discover it. Let me get it. If I've got it, let me not run from it. Open my eyes. Let me discover purpose. Let me discover your plan for my life. Yes, yes. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. By virtue of re re the resurrection, you are delivered from every form of captivity. So you are going to lift up your voice. By virtue of, now listen, other times we can talk about releasing the power of his resurrection. When that power goes and hit anything, the same result that happened to the body of Christ will happen. Hallelujah. The Almighty is the God that keeps and makes alive. When the resurrection power goes, if something is alive and you want it dead, it shall die. 
If it is dead, if the power touches it, it shall, it shall live. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So I want you to release the power of his resurrection to every bondage in your life. Let them bow today. I'm delivered. Now listen, in the book of Luke chapter 1, the Bible tells us something. It says in verse 71 uh, or seven, from 71 down to about 75, there's something that is said there. It says, it says verse 74, no, three. The oath which is what to our father Abraham, that he will grant unto us that we be delivered from, from the hand of our enemies, my serving without fear, all the days of our lives. Hallelujah. And under in Hebrews again, it says, all those who are subject unto death, hallelujah, to deliver them. So you are going to lift your voice. I don't know what bondage you are. It could be bondage of poverty, bondage of sickness, bondage of sin, bondage of inactivity, bondage of not getting a breakthrough, bondage of delay. Lift up your voice. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the power of his resurrection to every iota of bondage in my life. Bow out. Lift up your voice. I begin to speak against them now. Every bondage to bow out. You can walk out of the devil. You can walk out today. You can walk out by the anointing. Every bondage, everything holding you bound, become delivered. You are to walk free by virtue of the resurrection. By the anointing, every yoke to be destroyed. Every bondage be broken, be destroyed by the Spirit of God. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the grave to bring a quickening. I break every bondage. Be delivered. Be delivered by fire, by force. By the reason of the resurrection of the Lord. You are loosed. Even those in grave, they rose. Any grave holding you will command you to vomit you now. In the name of Jesus. Will render the adversary useless by the anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can you lift up your voice? Begin to say, Father, by the reason of this season, peace becomes my portion. The peace that the world cannot give, yes, peace. I'm delivered from every stress. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The peace of God that passes all understanding becomes my portion from today. By virtue of the world, it becomes my portion. It becomes my portion. I enjoy it. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Makaka Koribobo, Makaka Koribobo, Makaka Koribobo, Makaka Koribobo, Masato de Boboshke. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now, these prayers are very elaborate. In any area that anything is lacking, go back home, do the work. Pray, 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 pray. And don't forget, a price was paid. The last one is. Resurrection repositions the believer into dominion, dominion in every adventure of life. Dominion. You have to have dominion. You are not supposed to fail in any area of your life. Hallelujah. So lift up your voice. Say, Father, I thank you for the resurrection. By virtue of the resurrection, I have dominion. I begin to reign over all circumstances. In every area of my life, dominion. In my marital life, dominion. In my business life, dominion. In my body, dominion. Yes, in all my endeavors, dominion. By the anointing. Every yoke must be destroyed. Nothing will overcome me from today. I will overcome every circumstance. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Dominion. Dominion in every sphere of life. And then later when you get home, the seven covenant blessings that Jesus secured after he presented his blood on the altar before the Lord. Lift up your voice. Yes, dominion. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now lay your hands on your head. I'm just going to speak. 
I stand as God's oracle and I declare by faith, receive justification yeah. as if you have never sinned before. Yeah. From today, everything battling with your faith as per salvation will cause them to bow. Yeah. Receive justification yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I speak by faith today. You are established in the house of God. You are established as a member of the house of God. Amen. That is God's dwelling place. In his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forever. Begin to enjoy God. Amen. Receive the consciousness that you are in the household of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are a member of the body. Amen. Begin to get all the benefits that is to accrue to you from today. No molestation. No shaking. No stagnancy. You will not run from pillar to post. In the mighty name of Jesus. From tonight, I command, from today, you receive access to the truth. Access to the truth. You will not be clothed with lies. You will not be fooled in lies. Receive access to the truth. The truth. The truth. In the name of Jesus. You have no business with lie. You will no more lie. You have access to the truth from today and forever. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing, I stand and I declare a quickening of your mortal body. Receive a quickening. I cause every sickness to die. Anything terminal to be terminated by the anointing, by the reason of this season. Be quickened from today. As the Lord liveth, you will no longer be sickly. We we'll command every sickness swallowed up by the power of his resurrection. The Lord change your DNA. The Lord change your system. The Lord touch your blood and the veins in your body. Receive a quickening. A quickening. In the name of Jesus. Receive strength in the inner man. In the name of Jesus. Receive health and vitality. In the name of Jesus, I stand by the anointing. The plan and purpose of your life will be revealed. You will not grow up in darkness. You will know where you are going. You will know what you are doing. From today, the Holy Spirit reveal God's purpose for your life. And you will walk therein. In the name of Jesus, I stand as God's oracle by the power of his resurrection. You are delivered from every bondage. From every captivity. Whatsoever held you captive become captivated. We bring them under. By the anointing, we bring them under. Bow. 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 In the name of Jesus. I stand as God's oracle. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind. Receive that peace. Peace in your marriage. Peace in your business. Peace in your unit. Peace in your day-to-day -day activities. Be peace in your heart. Peace in all your endeavors. The peace that the world cannot give. Receive and enjoy from today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I stand and I declare from today, you are brought into dominion. Your dominion is reestablished. Dominion over circumstances and situations. You have dominion over all the powers of darkness. Dominion over the plans of the wicked. Dominion over lack. Dominion over poverty. You have dominion. You are to be above. Never to be beneath. I speak by faith. All the benefits of the resurrection will be your portion. There will be a deep yearning in your heart to discover this truth and to live by them. From today, you will never be the same again. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah. Our story is changing. Our story is changing. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say, Praise the Lord. Can we be seated?